ambulance emergency? Yeah, there's been an accident. Uh, we've been in a car crash. And, okay, um, what is the address? We're at Golden Valley High School. Hurry, um, send an ambulance from um, my friend Don. She's not looking too good. He's out there in his blood. There's a lot of blood hey, Alondra. Alondra, she's not walking. What'd you do? Not, I don't know. I was, I was good. I was good. Is that dumb? <laughs> hey, you better check them. Is he moving? Can you tell me your name? Austin. Austin, do you remember what happened? There was a car crash. What are you feeling right now, Austin? Uh, not much. Can't really feel my legs. I'm gonna put this in your nose. You're gonna feel a little tickle, okay? Can you feel that, Austin? No. Okay. One, two, and three. All right, move it out. Got it. Obvious lacerations at the forehead and the left, right face. One, two, three. Okay. I'm gonna put them back. Wait, the seat's fine on. Okay, Austin, you mentioned that you can't really feel anything. Are you able to feel this? No? no? Nothing? No. Let it go. No, it, it's what... There you go. So All right. Can you feel this? No. All right. We have no filling from about nipple line down. We'll have to get a CT and MRI. Okay. I'm going under in this time I fear there's no 
Lord has saved me This all or nothing really got away You're driving me crazy I need somebody to hear Somebody to know Somebody to have Somebody to hold It's easy to say But it's never the same I guess I kinda like the way you know all the pain Now the day bleeds Into nightfall And you're not here To get me through it all I let my gun down And then you pull the rug I was getting kinda used to being so Okay, let's hook up to the monitor. She was the passenger side of the vehicle. Airbags were deployed. Uh, she was extricated by fire. It took about 10 minutes. Get her moved over. Uh, unconscious the whole time. Does she have injuries to the hand and to the right arm? And no pulses the whole time? Uh, no pulses the whole time. We've been working it this whole time. Okay. Uh, no signs of life at this time. Let's get her on the monitor, guys. Not like a bagger. Let's get her over. Okay. Can you just move her over on the board? Okay. Are you guys, is that, is that bedlock? Yes. One, Are you guys ready? One, two, three, three. Okay. Over. Two. Okay, we're gonna do a pulse check. Take those straps off while we're checking. What's our rhythm? It looks like detox. All right, we're gonna set it for a shot. Okay, so now pads are on, charging. All right, everybody, everybody clear? Clear. All right, shot in three, two, one. All right, continue CPR. It's getting hard to back her. But we're going to have to set it for intubation. Okay. We'll get the airway box. Let's do another pulse check. What's our rhythm? Looks like we're still in VTAC. Let's do another shot. All right. Charging. Everybody clear? All clear? Shot in three, two, one. Okay. Go ahead and continue CPR. Is the family here? Come on in. Come on in. So your daughter was involved in a car accident. She was a passenger of a drunk driving accident. We're, we're doing everything we can right now. We've been doing CPR. She's, we've done like six rounds of epi so far. We've been going for about an hour. At this point, we haven't got a pulse back. So we wanted you to come in and have a chance to say your goodbyes. <laughs> Just continue CPR. We'll do a pulse check in just a minute. It's okay, hon. Does anybody else go ahead and do a pulse check? Does anybody else have any suggestions? We're asystole on monitor. We're still asystole. Okay. Time of death: twelve fourteen. <laughs> this all and nothing we of love and go be sleeping without you. Now I need somebody to know, somebody to hear, somebody to have. Just to know how it feels It's easy to say But it's never the same I guess I kinda like the way you help me escape Now the day bleeds into nightfall And you're not here to get me through it all I let my gun down And then you pull the rug I was getting kinda used to being so Tonight fall and you're not here to get me through it all I let my guard down and then you pull the rug I was getting kinda used to being so what you love But now the day bleeds and tonight fall and you're not here to get me through it all 
To the right, inside the red square, and face the wall. Okay, when I take this off, you're gonna put your hands behind your back uh, on the wall, okay? Go ahead and let go. Hand on the wall. Hand on the wall. Go ahead and step back. Uh, one more time. Put your hands up higher on the wall. Okay, I'm gonna pat you down. Is there anything on you that can hurt me? Okay, go ahead and step inside. You're gonna go right on top of that platform. You're not gonna leave me. Are you gonna leave me? Right there. I have graduation soon, officer. Go ahead and face this wall. You're gonna go take a step back. You're going to put your hands away from your body and against the wall behind you. And away from your body. There you go. Don't move. You're going to put your left hand behind your back. Give me your right hand. We're going to take some fingerprints. Walk over that way. You're going to stand inside the red square on the bottom. Turn around and look up at this camera. You're going to step right in here. They will get you booked in. Hello, what's your name? Hello, uh, Have you ever been in gangs, associated with any gangs? No. Okay. Everything on your booking is correct? No? Everything, the address and everything is correct? Go ahead and step out. You're going to walk straight down that way to the last door on the right. Stand on this side. Right in here. I'll have you guys walk inside and we'll wall is up the bag. Is this your son? Yep. Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me his full name? Dominic Anderson Flores. And what's his date of birth? 12-16. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We're here in courtroom 11 for the sentencing hearing of the defendant, Ms. Bueno, who is present, accompanied by counsel. This is the time and place set for sentencing. Uh, Ms. Bueno, you've been convicted by way of a jury of your peers of two counts of gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated, one count of driving under the influence causing great bodily injury with an enhancement alleging that when you inflicted that great bodily injury, you also inflicted such a degree of great bodily injury that the victim of that count will never walk again. Before I proceed to sentencing, do you have anything you wish to say to the court? I'm sorry. Ms. Bueno, this being the time and place for sentencing, the court has read and considered probation's report and recommendation in this matter. The court has had a significant amount of time to consider the facts and circumstances of this offense. And frankly, Ms. Bueno, I find your behavior so reckless and frankly disturbing in all my years on the bench. The amount of harm you've caused is really immeasurable. And I want you to think about this before I impose sentence. You've killed two people. 
You've left one person injured who will never walk again. So obviously you've destroyed their lives. you destroyed their family's lives, their parents' lives. You've destroyed your life. you destroyed your parents' lives for such a senseless and preventable act that never should have happened. The court, having considered all of that, finds the circumstances of this offense so egregious as to justify the upper term, upper term of 11 years as to victim one, one-third the midterm of two years as to victim two, those are the vehicular homicides, one-third the midterm of eight months on the great bodily injury while intoxicated, plus a five-year enhancement for an aggregate or total term in the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation of 18 years, eight months. Do you have anything else you'd like to say to the court? You're remanded to the custody of the sheriff for delivery to the director of the corrections. Deputy? May I please say where I live, Your Honor? Deputy, it's up to you. Good luck, Ms. Plano. Yesterday, several students did not make it to class. Every 15 minutes, their obituaries were read out loud for their classmates and friends to hear. The students were taken to a private location for a retreat. There, they participated in team building activities and listened to guest speakers who had had their lives changed due to an alcohol-related traffic crash. Students also wrote letters to their families. In those letters, they were able to express their love for their families the regrets they had and if they had lived, what they would have done different. Last night, at the same time, the parents of the involved students also met for a retreat. They too wrote letters to their son or daughter about their feelings of losing their child. The parents and students have not seen or spoken to each other for over 24 hours. A few of the letters are going to be read this morning. Parents, 
When your son or daughter is called up to read, I will ask that you come up and stand here beside them. Students, when your parent and par or parents are called up to read, I will ask you to come up and stand by them as well. The first student is going to be Alondra. Every 15 minutes, someone in the United States dies or is seriously injured in an alcohol-related incident. Today, I died. I wish I could have said a proper goodbye. Every day, I yell out bye and leave the house. I should have given you a big hug and assure you that I was going to be okay. It broke my heart to hear you in pain, to hear you crying. It took everything to not yell out, open my eyes, to tell you I was okay. I wanted to hug you and tell you I love you, to tell you it wasn't real, I'm alive. I wanted to cry when they called time of death and heard you say mi niña and you hugged me tightly for one last time. I never want to put you through that again. I learned that how much our lives can change in just one second. I learned to appreciate the times we have together more than before. I want to let you know that no matter what, I will always think before doing anything. I love you, Mom. I want to tell you I'm okay. I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Alondra. Can I have Aaron please step up? Every 15 minutes, someone in the United States dies or is seriously injured but in an alcohol-related incident. Today, I died. I never got the and I never got the chance to say goodbye. I wish I just had one more time to show you guys how much you, you guys and all my family meant to me and how much I was, I love all of you. I wish I just had one more chance to give you the biggest hugs ever and the amount of love, wait. I lost my spot, my bad. The amount of love I have for all of you is unexplainable, and I don't ha have a clue in the world what I would do in my life without you guys. I've taken way too many things for granted. I, I took for granted living a long, happy life, but now because of one stupid decision, I no longer have one. I know you are angry, and I can't imagine how hurt you guys are. You did not, you, you, you did your best to teach me how to make good decisions. And I, I'm terribly sorry I failed you guys. If only I, if only I had known how much <clears throat> my actions would impact all of you and everyone around me before all this happened. And I wish I could take back and change all of them. Although I never got to say it before I left, I love you so much and I will forever thank you, you guys, and all of the things you have done for me. I love you always and forever. Sincerely, Aaron. So since they're up here already, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Vasquez. It was too hard to write a letter about not having your child. I know your parents probably feel, would feel the same way. Um, dear Aaron, we love you so much. It's not an easy thing to do, but this was important and hopefully impactful. We're very proud of you, and we feel blessed to have you in our lives as our son. 
and I'm so happy this is only a reenactment. <laughs> it's impossible to suppress a parent's love and a God-given love for your child. The thought of nothing, not having you in our lives was painful, even if it wasn't real. And we trust God it never will be real. We love you. That's for you. Yes, we really missed you a lot, and even though this was just an overnight thing, the realization of what could be is unbearable. High school is the beginning of a fun, exciting future. We want you to experience. So always laugh, love, and have fun. Be joyous, courageous, with gentleness and kindness. This is who you are, the young man God made you to be. You are funny, too. Your friends and brothers and us all get to know the great side of you, this great side of you. We look forward to your presence again, so it's no longer an empty room, and we will have no more missing pieces from our family puzzle. <laughs> There's so much about you that we are proud of and thankful about who you are becoming. You are funny, talented, strong, caring, and intelligent, and never let anything hold you back because God has a great plan for your life and we want you to experience all of it. You have wisdom, strength, honor, and courage and use them all wisely to the best of your ability. Thank you for making us proud parents and thank you for the love you have for us. We're thankful for you. We're up for this challenge and it's a memory and a lesson that all in one. All of our futures are secure in Christ. We will both always be here for you forever. God bless you and we love you. Mom and Dad. Thank you, Vasquez family. Can I have uh, the Mello family come up, please? <sighs> come on, that side. All right. You knew I had to start with a Bible verse. Sorry, dude. <laughs> if I speak in tongue, the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I have only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. The love that your dad and I have for you is like that. You memorize those verses in fifth grade, that whole chapter. It was always an important lesson from Mrs. Trost. She still teaches it today. Some of you out there, you know it too. You had to memorize it. I know there's a few of you up there. Uh, 
I know you don't remember all of it, but I hope that there are pieces that you will always hold in your heart. The love that your dad and I have for you is great, more than you will ever understand. One day when you have a family of your own, it'll all make sense. And even then, a parent's love is so unfathomable. Now the house was quiet last night as we adjusted to the new normal of you being gone. Thankfully, it was just temporarily. Your door was closed and those crazy rope lights that you have on all the time were dim. There weren't any loud doors opening and closing as you sneak out to the garage to eat the last of the ice cream. And in the morning when I went into your room, out of habit, I smiled. Only this morning. I smiled as I gathered all the dirty dinner plates and cups that were scattered about. You're laughing, guys, but you know you do it too. This time, I wasn't even mad. I was a little annoyed, but not mad. I imagined how I might feel if that was the very last time. Thankfully, today, I know it's not. Today, you will come home safe. You are our baby. You have watched three others go before you with great successes and struggles. You have listened to the lectures. Clean up your room. Put your laundry out. No more ice cream. And of course, get your grades up. We are hard on you every single day. And we hope that you understand it's because we love you. As your parents, we have been entrusted to guide you and your path to watch over you. That is the gift God gave us. You're, you work every day to live up to our expectations and those of your own, which are sometimes even higher. You have lived in the shadow of the mellow name yet you cast a bright light of your own. May you always remember through this experience that your choices make an impact. In this experience, while you are still alive, your life and the lives of those who love you are forever changed. You have and you will continue to face challenges in your life and you will have choices to make. But the choices that you make, the influences that you have on your friends and the influences that you allow your friends to have on you will make all the difference. Choose wisely. And above all else, make these choices in love. Blessings and love to you always, mom and dad. Thank you, Amy. We now have a special guest speaker for you this morning that is going to speak about real life event that has changed her life forever. I would like to tell you a true story about my best friend who got sentenced to almost 13 years for killing two people while driving under the influence of marijuana when she was 16 years old. My friend was just like all of you guys, sitting on the bleachers, going to school, almost having her graduation and planning for prom, full of life, but she wasn't making the smartest decisions to live by. I wish I can tell you that my friend had a bad upbringing to try to justify her poor decisions just a tad bit, that she grew up in poverty, had bad parents who wouldn't acknowledge her, or didn't have family to stand behind her, but this wouldn't be true. My friend was raised in a traditional Hispanic home. She comes from a very family-orientated family, a loving but stern mother, a hard-working father who went to college, raised six kids, and taught them how to work on cars since he was a mechanic. 
Her parents didn't fail to instill good morals and thinking skills onto her, but my friend failed to take heed from these things and decided to go against what she knew was wrong. My friend started smoking weed when she was 14 years old. She started smoking a blunt every morning and trying to hide it from her teachers and parents by putting on eye drops and perfume to cover it up. She thought it wasn't so bad because she wasn't drinking alcohol nor popping pills. She kept telling herself it's just a natural herb after all, right? This became an everyday lifestyle for her. She would wake up and seek her high, slowly progressing to smoking just one joint to several blunts all throughout the day. This became her addiction, with her being in denial that she could stop if she really wanted to. My friend started selling weed at the age of 15. She went against her family's upbringing to have a legal job and make a life for herself with clean, hardworking money. She chose the fast life instead and started thinking she was invincible by dodging law enforcement. She went against her morals and started taking her parents' vehicle to go sell edibles and weed to other young and older people, to their parents' homes, at parks and parties, and even scooped down to a low level and would go to local schools around Modesto where she lived. She was able to take her family out and pay for the bill. She had all the nice designer purses and clothes. At 16 years old, she took driver's ed and was able to buy herself her own Mercedes-Benz car. She felt popular and powerful. Having all these nice things, she started to feel like she was prospering at what she was doing. Little did she know that she was heading in the path of self-destruction. My best friend was focused on all the wrong things. All of these stems from her being self-centered, greedy, and always wanting more and more. She was never satisfied. She thought because she was flashy on Snapchat and had a lot of followers on social media that she was being seen. She felt invincible, like she was never going to get caught. That driving high would never harm nobody else because she was good at it and had done it so many times. It's tragic that my best friend had to go through a devastating event to have her eyes opened. On November 29th of 2017, my friend went to go pick up her brother Julian and her friend Hayden Ignacio from the music studio late at night. She was tired that day, was smoking weed during the day, but felt like she was still capable of driving that night. She prided herself on getting her friend home, then getting her little brother and herself home. She was driving down a residential street, listening to music loud in the car, laughing together and enjoying the ride, not realizing how fast she was going. Next thing she knew, she went through the intersection, T-boned a car that was crossing that same intersection. She told me all she remembered was her brother screaming before everything went black. She remembered opening up her eyes after a while and seeing her airbags popped. The car smoky and loud sirens coming from several directions. She hopped out the car and helped her brother out, then carried her friend out the vehicle because he was passed out in the back seat. The other car was flipped upside down. My friend thought this was a nightmare, but it was her reality. There was no escaping this. Her bad decisions had caught up to her now. At the hospital, she was informed that the results of her actions led to this vehicle collusion, which killed two people. She was informed that the two people in the other car had died. They drew blood from her and it came up positive with marijuana. She was charged with DUI, two counts of murder, two counts of great bodily injury because Hayden suffered major injuries and her brother got hurt too. Years later to this day, my best friend still struggles with the reality that she's the person who took people out of this world. It did something to her soul and changed her life forever. Not only hers, but the other family who grieved the loss. This horrible realization of what transpired to my friend within a blink of an eye, to someone who thought something like this would never happen to her, could happen to anyone who follows her footsteps.
I could tell you the story about my best friend because that friend of mine is me. My name is Brittany Gomez. I'm now 23 years old and have changed my life around. I'm pained with what transpired and will live with this tragedy weighing heavy on my heart for the rest of my life. I'm currently incarcerated at Chowchilla State Prison, WG7982, as an inmate firefighter in Station 5. I'm now training to be a firefighter and be a first responder to save people's lives. This helps me get back to the community by helping others now. I did this horrible census act six years ago when I was 16 years old because I refused to listen to my parents, to live the right way, and not see all the red flags that I was doing. I kept smoking weed every single day and driving under the influence thinking I was good at it, thinking I would never get caught nor harm someone else. If you can relate to what I'm saying, please open your eyes and change. Please don't wait till it's too late and end up like myself in prison. Driving under the influence of weed, alcohol, pills, or other drugs can end someone else's life and even your own in a car wreck. Think about if doing all of these things I did is worth taking a life. I took two souls who should have still been here, living their beautiful life. I destroyed a family and caused heartache to so many people involved in this. If my story can impact or change the way at least one of you kids sitting on the bleachers think today, then telling my story is worth it. I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, I want to thank Golden Valley for bringing this amazing program. Um, students, uh, this is reality. It, it is reality. I, I know you guys are, you know, saw it yesterday and it's fake. But if you guys, you guys are young adults now, um, start, start acting like it. Um, we bring this program to you guys so you guys can realize um, what happens. Um, we're going to be dismissing you guys. It's fourth period. If you guys need any type of counseling, we have uh, staff here for you guys. Um, with that, uh, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you. All right, juniors and seniors, you're going to fourth period. On your way to fourth period. Thank you. Thank you.